Welcome to section 7, Visualizing Data. In this section, we are going to pull together everything that we've done so far, how we take the data that we've collected and make it usable, not only for ourselves, but for others as well. So let's get started. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how to use tables to represent data. We're going to look at advanced Splunk visualizations, various search commands. We're going to spend some time looking into the relative time syntax that Splunk has available. And that's really going to be useful for developing different kinds of searches that look for very specific time frames or time frames that you want to be able to reference on a recurring basis. And then we'll wrap things up with doing visualizations and dashboards. And I know in the last video we did a little bit with a quick visualization. We're going to bring that all together and build a more complex dashboard that contains various data sources that we're going to pull together throughout this section. This is going to be a really exciting section and kind of show you a lot of the value that you can get out of Splunk. So this puts together everything we've learned, and there's a couple of different concepts that we're going to go through that build on each other throughout this section. We're going to start by looking at reporting results by using tables to convey data. Then we're going to look at advanced searching concepts and go from not just simple tables, but do things more powerful, such as doing some statistical analysis of the data or doing geolocation of IP addresses, those sorts of things. And then once we get those visualizations and we put together and layer on those advanced searching concepts, we're going to look at building dashboards and visualize this data. So let's dive right into tables. Tables allow us to report on log data. So why do tables exist? All too often, we're looking to provide specific information to someone. We don't want it to say, here's the dump of all the logs. We want to be able to present it in a more meaningful format, almost like a spreadsheet. And tables are very useful for reporting purposes. And also, in some cases, they can be even more effective than like a graph or a chart, because a lot of times you want to see the actual data and you want to know things about the data without having to look at the whole log message. And that's what tables are useful for. So let's take a look at an example. So let's hypothetically say that you have an AWS instance that's exposed to the internet. In fact, that's not hypothetical, what you actually have. And let's also, as firewalls on these instances allow SSH from the whole world, which is how we set it up. And that gives us a lot of interesting data that we can use to make a report of who's trying to hack into our system. In this case, if you have a system on the internet, someone's going to try to get into it. And this is a really great way to see we have this data that's coming into Splunk. Let's understand what this data is trying to tell us. And then we'll turn this into a dashboard. So. Before we go ahead and start making this example, let's go ahead and kind of think about what we know. So we know right away that the index containing the logs is the OS index. We know the source type is Linux underscore secure. And let's start by searching for that data. So we'll go right into searching and reporting. And we'll search for the OS index. And for the source type, Linux underscore secure. And we'll change the time range to the last 15 minutes. And we'll see there were just four events in the last 15 minutes. We can expand this range a little bit more. And we'll see, yeah, okay, we have more events, so that looks good. The next thing I want to do is see what fields we have in some of these values. So just looking at this log, for example, we see that admin's a user that's trying to log in, and this is an IP address associated with that. That's not me. Same here for root. So let's expand a couple of these events and look at what is in this data. See right here, in this case, we didn't actually have the user admin extracted automatically. We could go ahead and add a field extraction if we want to do that by using the extract fields function here in Splunk. That said, a lot of these log messages correspond in pairs. And you'll often see there's a connection attempt that's followed by a connection being closed. So 
we don't necessarily want to look at both of those in this case because we might be duplicating the data that we have. So let's look for a different event. So we see connection closed. Let's say invalid user. There we go. There's an action here. And this is tagged as authentication or SSH deauthentication for event type. So SSH deauthentication, that looks like something that could be useful for what we want to do because it shows a user is trying to SSH and authenticate. So let's narrow down to looking at just SSH deauthentication messages. So I'm going to click here on event type and we'll go to SSH deauthentication. Okay. From here, you'll see a decent number of these messages, not all of them by any means, but a lot of them have users. Some of them may not have users, but in this case, we might be very interested in seeing what usernames are trying to log in. So if I go back to the user field and I click events with this field, it's going to add something into the search. You'll see right here, just looking for user equals star. So anything that has a user. Now, if we go ahead and look at user, you'll see these are all the users. There's 100% of the values. So now let's look at some other fields to determine what might be something we want to include in a table. So we see user obviously was something that was interesting because it tells us what username is trying to log in. Source IP, that's the attacker. That's the user that's trying to log in. App, SSHD, they're trying to log in via SSH. That could be interesting as well. Action, failure and success. This is interesting. We have a successful login. We go ahead and see, hey, that was me. I was able to log in successfully. You can see right away, we use Splunk to quickly track down something that was actually useful. But in this case, let's just say we want a report of everything that's trying to log in and everything that was successful. We don't necessarily want to just see my successful login. Or if you want to alert on only successful logins, that might be exactly what you want to see. I'm going to go ahead and clear out action success for now, though. So let's take this and go ahead and build a table. To build a table, it's really simple. All we have to do is type the table command. From here, we specify all of the field names that we want to include in the table. I'm going to start with time, underscore time. And that tells us the time of the event. That's a special field name because it has an underscore in it. And using that is going to ensure that we get a properly formatted timestamp. Next, I want to know the action, whether they were successful or not. Next, we want to know what user. We'll just specify the user field. We can include app to see if it's SSHD or something else. And then we can specify the source IP address. We hit enter. And we go ahead and get a table showing all of the users that are trying to log in, whether they were successful or not, and their IP addresses. Finally, what we can do is save the search as a report. I'm going to go here to save as, report, and we'll call this SSH temps. Go ahead in there and type out a quick description, and we will save this report. And there you go. The report has been created, and it's ready for us to use later.